Hello everybody, Tim here, and today I'm going to talk about um, how to add chords to a song which have none. Um, so today I'm just going to use America the Beautiful as an example, and I'm going to show you some of the chords you can add in, um, even though they're not written there for the left hand. So let me um, show you and get started. So here we have America the Beautiful, 4-4 uh, four, four time signature, and if you notice, the right hand and left hand are the exact same. Which isn't the most appealing sound or not the most exciting so we need to add chords um, so what you want to do is um, the first chord the, the first chord in the first full measure of the song um, right here I'm gonna get rid of that but it's right there um, that is almost always um, going to be a one chord now that brings me to something uh, we got to talk about so we got to talk about first what key are we in with this song well I think we're in the key of C because uh, we have no sharps no flats um, I see a lot of G's E's and C's throughout the song uh, without m much variation I mean there's a C sharp in there um, but let's just say we're in the key of C uh, it looks certainly looks that way so our first chord is going to be a one chord now if you don't know what I'm talking about you may want to look at some of the music theory uh, videos I've made before this, um, especially in some of the academy classes I have. Um, I've gone over this. Um, but anyway, what I mean by one chord is if you're in the key of C, it's going to be a major chord built on the first note of the scale. So that'll be C. So it'll be a C chord. Now, um, coming into that, if there's a pickup measure, now you can choose to leave a chord out there. You can just play the pickup measure, that G there. And then add in a C chord. Um, instead of playing the left hand as it's, as it's written, you're just going to play a block, like maybe whole note um, chord. To make it, for um, simplicity's sake, we're just going to have one chord per measure. That'll make it the easiest. Sure, you can add in other chords, and we may talk about that in a later video. But today, one chord uh, per measure, and that should make it sound, um, you know, a little more appealing than what's written here. So uh, if you want to put a chord into that into that um, pickup measure. I would use a five chord, and that uh, would make perfect sense since five, if you know anything about music theory, the, the chord built on the fifth um, scale degree, as we call it, or the fifth note of the scale, um, often leads to one, or the chord built on the um, first note of the scale. So that's just a common thing uh, in music theory that five usually goes to one. So we have five to one. Uh, remember that that's our first full measure where the one is. So that's where you want the one. You, you don't usually want to put one on the pickup measure because um, that will kind of throw everything off. Um, so you want one um, most times in the, the very first measure, a one chord. And then on the very last measure, might as well fill this in now, um, you also want to end on a one chord. So instead of playing this uh, middle C that they have written here in the left hand, you're going to play a C chord. Now you should know, if you're watching this video, know uh, a lot of your major chords. If not, look through my music theory videos again and check those out. But a C major chord is going to be C and G, E and G. So you'll end the song like that. You'll hit um, the C as uh, it's normally written in the melody. And then with your left hand, you're going to play a chord, whatever chord is designated there at the bottom. Now if you want to make this easier on yourself, sure, you could write... Um, your five chord is G major. Whoops. I'll just write G. Makes it easier. And then this is a C major chord. Um, you may want to write down the letter of the chord below the number just so you can keep track if you're not as familiar with it. But anyway, so far we have five with our pickup measure note. And then to one there. That sounds pretty good so far. And then you're going to play the right hand like normal while you hold down that left hand. Now, um, you, the next chord is going to be a 5 chord. Now you may be saying, well, how did you figure that out? Well, you could use a couple of different chords here, but there's one thing I want to explain, is that when you pick a chord in a song, for the most part, there's a, a little bit of leeway in this rule, but when you're trying to fill in um, chords in a song which has no chords, um, you want to, whatever chord you pick, you want to make sure the note in the melody fits that chord. That is the safest bet. Now you can pick other chords where the note isn't in the chord 
and have it be okay if you know what you're doing. But for, for, for um, this sake and, and for what we're doing, uh, we are going to um, only use a chord in which um, the right hand note is contained in that chord. So for instance, I chose G major. Well, hey, take a look here. In the right hand in the beginning of that measure, it's a G, um, a, the note G, the pitch G, which, hey, falls into the G major triad. So what I'm trying to say is um, the note in your right hand should belong somewhere in the chord in your left hand out of those three notes that you're playing. So since I'm playing a G major chord, G, B, and D, um, that G there is um, okay. Now, you may be saying, okay, well, we could have used another chord there for sure, because there are other chords that have G in them. There's an E minor chord that has G in it. And hey, that doesn't sound too bad either. Um, let me play it so far with the E minor chord. And that sounds okay. Um, I think G is a safer bet. Um, so what you want to do is when you're, you're trying to figure out these chords, obviously you want to match whatever notes in the right hand with one of the notes in the chord. Um, to make that that's the safest bet in determining the chord um, but um, you want to play around with the different chords to see which one sounds the best um, the, and you want to make sure that uh, whenever you have five um, that you're probably going to be either going to four after that or, or back to one uh, make sure the chord progression makes sense so what, what I mean by that is you don't want like a three chord leading to a five chord leading to a one chord leading to a six chord leading to a two chord like that that chord progression just doesn't make any sense um, normally chord progressions are like one four five one now they can alter between those it could go like one four five four one or one five one four one five one those make sense because you can you can um you know it's, it sounds like it has some sort of direction to it uh, but you want to pick the chord that makes the most sense to your ears so play around with this. So you may say, okay, I'm um, starting out. Now that second complete measure, um, like I said, you can put an E chord there. You can put another C chord there. And that sounds okay. But the G chord works great, the best. And that's because not only does this first note G belong in the G major triad, which is made out of the notes G, B, and D, but so is the next note D. Now E is not. Um, but we can use that as a passing tone, which we haven't talked about yet in the theory videos. Um, but anyways, um, since we have two notes in this measure, in the melody, that belonged to the G major chord, that's probably the best choice for us. So you want to pick a chord uh, that makes sense both to your ears and um, theory-wise. Now, if you're not used to looking um, at music in terms of theory, don't worry about it. Um, you can just play around to, to see which chord uh, sounds the best. Just make sure whatever chord you pick with your left hand has one of the notes in the right hand um, in it. So, for instance, if you have an F major chord, make sure that the, note, the first note in that right hand is some sort of F, A, or C. So it fits into that F major chord. Um, so the next measure, uh, right here where we have the Fs, uh, well, what kind? We need to pick a chord now with uh, something with the left hand that has an F in it. Well, the easiest choice would be F major, right? And hey, that doesn't work. That doesn't sound too bad. I mean, let's play it coming in from the last measure. That sounds pretty good to me. And it, and it makes sense because this, by the way, this is a four chord. The fourth note of the scale, you build a chord on it and that's your F major chord. Um, this makes perfect sense because not only in this measure do we have an F that belongs in that chord, we also have an A. So we have two notes in that measure that belong to that chord. That makes perfect sense. Um, now you could have picked um, a D minor chord which also has F in it. You could also pick B diminished, um, but uh, B diminished kind of works because uh, if you pick B diminished, B, D, and F, um, or no, you can pick B flat, but that that doesn't fit in the key signature. So B diminished. Remember that the chord should fit in the key signature. We're, we're going to go over something a little bit later where it doesn't. But let's take a look here. Um, B diminished works okay because you have an F which belongs in the B diminished chord, and then the A kind of does if it's a B diminished seven, but um, but the B, B is also belongs to that chord, so that's an option. Let me play the measure going um, into that. that. 
that's okay. So you can use B diminished here or F major. I think F major sounds just a little bit better since the diminished chord tends to be a little bit um, tense. Um, so I played the next measure. Uh, our note is G. Now here's the thing um, you got to keep in mind with music is that um, that you usually have um, in music, not all the time, like four measure idea or like a four measure uh, phrase to a melody. So here's our first part of um, the song. Oops. See how that completes an idea? Now, if you look here, the last note of this last measure in the first line is the beginning of the next phrase. Notice how um, there's one beat there leading into the next measure, just like we did in the first line where we had the pickup measure. Um, so um, every four measures, one, two, three, four, four almost complete measures, um, that makes up a musical phrase. And what you have to understand is that at the musical phrase, there will also there will often be, especially in simple songs like this, some kind of longer note, whether it be a half note, dotted half note, or a whole note. Um, and most of the time, not all the time, but most of the time at the end of that that four bar phrase, you're going to have a five chord. And that's what we call a half cadence. Um, I know we haven't talked about that yet, but um, here we go. Uh, five chord, which by the way is a G major. And does that work for what we've talked about so far? Well, let's look at, at the notes we have in our right hand. Well, we have just G and G. Well, those both fit perfectly into a G major chord. Now you could end on a, a three chord that has G major or G, the note G in it too, but I don't recommend that um, just because um, the way music theory works, uh, most of the time at the end of a four bar phrase, they will have a five chord and that will kind of set you up to play the one chord on the next complete measure, which makes sense because remember I said five usually leads back to one. So let me click here and get it set up for the next line. So uh, we had five chord before, so one is probably I'm going to be our next chord. If you notice that up top, we did do go five to four, which is okay, that does happen, and then back to five, so you can do that. But here we have five and then one again, which makes sense because we're beginning a new four bar phrase, and most of the time, um, that's gonna be a one chord. And at the end of the four bar phrase, which is this D right here, this half note D, what kind of chord do you think that's gonna be? A five chord, um, because it's a, uh, it's the end of a four bar phrase, so we're gonna say that that's a five chord, G major. So now we have to fill in the chords in between. So uh, like we said, we're gonna pick one chord per measure. This first measure, you got a C major chord there. Now, um, that next chord makes sense if that's a, a G major chord. And why does that make sense? Well, let's take a look. In a G major chord, you have the notes G, B, and D. Well, hey, look at our right hand. We have a G, two Ds, and another D. Well, those notes, all those notes, fall into the G major triad. So that makes perfect sense. Um, so you wouldn't use a C major triad here. It sounds okay, but um, it doesn't make as much sense as using a five chord here um, because the five chord uh, has two of the notes in the right hand in that chord, whereas the C chord only has one, that G and the Ds don't fit. So that's why it sounds a little bit off if you use a C major chord. I mean, it'll sound okay, but let's say we're gonna use a five chord here, uh, which is C major, or no, no G major, <laughs> sorry. And then this one um, was C major. Let me move that there. All right, now, Second line, third complete measure over, we have a C sharp. Well, what's weird about that C sharp? Well, that doesn't exist in the key of C, right? The key of C, C major anyway. No sharps and no flats throughout the whole whole um, thing. So if we have a, um, a sharp that indicates that we have some kind of borrowed chord going on, um, anytime you see a uh, sharp or flat or any kind of what we call accidental sharps or flats that don't exist in the key signature, 
Um, some of the time, not all the time, but some of the time it indicates that you've either changed key or uh, you have borrowed a key from another, another key. Um, so what we want to do is figure out what key uh, that we're borrowing um, that from. So if we have a, a C sharp, right, um, what kind of, well, let's look here. In the right hand we have the notes C sharp, D, E, and A. Well, playing those four notes at a time, we have the notes A, C sharp, and E. Well, what kind of chord do those three notes belong to? Well, those three notes belong to the A major chord. Um, now the D doesn't. The D is what we call a passing tone, which is a type of non-chord tone. It doesn't exist in the chord we're trying to do. So we have an A major chord here, and I figured that out because I looked at the notes in the right hand. You know, kind of laid them out on the keyboard, and I thought to myself, what chord do I know that f closely fits those three, or, or you know, those four notes? And now you, you may be saying, okay, well the A major chord works perfectly because it has A, C sharp, and E. Now that D doesn't belong in there. Um, but that's okay. So long as you have um, at least one of the notes belonging to the chord you're put, putting underneath, um, it'll work. But you want as many of those right hand notes as possible to fit into the chord that you're writing underneath. So A major. Let me think about that. we should do here one thing uh, the reason I was thinking is I was thinking that uh, because we have an A major chord here um, this A major chord can't leave lead into the next chord five on its own it just sounds too awkward I mean that sounds okay that sounds okay but what I would like to do, like I said, you want to play around with this and figure this out, is that we have, uh, we definitely have an A major chord here, right? Now we have to figure out what, uh, now this is some advanced music theory, so if you don't know what I'm talking about, that's okay. Um, but the A major chord actually doesn't belong in the key of C. So what we've done is we've borrowed it from the second note of the scale. So this is what we call, and, and this is... Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, uh, Music Theory Level 3, a class I developed, will really help you uh, figure this stuff out. But um, what we're doing is we're borrowing this chord from another key because it has one of the notes that doesn't belong in the key. So we have to figure out uh, what chord we, um, or, or what key we've borrowed it from. Well, this is a classic um, 5 of 2 chord. Let me, let me write this out. So what this means, 5 of 2, is that we've taken the second note of the C major scale and pretended for a minute that that was our key. I know it's a little confusing, but the, but the, the second number, the two, you know how it's a number slash another number, the second number is the key that you're borrowing it from. So we're borrowing it from the key of D and we're actually taking the fifth note, uh, a chord built on the fifth note in that scale, and that's our, um, our five. So we're taking the fifth note of the second note of the scale and that's how we borrow our chord. So this is an A major chord. Most of the time when you see a 5 of 2 or a 5 of anything or a, a 7 of, of whatever, chances are is that your next chord is going to be that chord that you're borrowing or, or the key that you're borrowing. Um, so it will be a D minor chord. Now we have to figure out where is a good place to put a D minor chord. Well, how about a note that belongs in um, D minor, or the, the D minor triad, D, F, or A. So we can put it either on the second beat or this last beat here because the D or the A um, both fit in the key of D. Now you want to figure out which one sounds best, where to place it. Now that sounds okay. Let me try moving the chord on the last beat of the measure.
try again. You know, I kind of like... Well, that doesn't make sense, because that would be... Yeah, that would... here's the thing. You could probably put a D major or a D minor, and it would probably sound pretty good. Um, let me think. I actually like the D major better. Um, however, that's not... Um, let me put this. So if we put D major, that's that's not really the two chord. That's another barred chord because we have an F sharp in that chord. Um, so we're actually... That's actually going to be the five of two. Or not the five of two. Um, the five of five, rather. So we have a five of two. And then technically we're supposed to go into D minor uh, because that's that would be the two chord. Uh, but let's say that we have a 5 of 5. Now, what you could have done is you could have just left it at A major here. Like we said, we're, we're just going to put one chord per measure. So if you want to eliminate confusion, just do one chord per measure. And uh, if you're looking to add a little more flavor to the music, you might want to add in a couple more chords if you know what you're doing. If you don't know what you're doing, uh, play it safe. And at the beginning of each measure, write down the chord you want and make sure that that chord has most of the right hand notes in it. And the, the chord that fits that the best, that ha where the most of the right hand notes fall into that chord, that's probably the best choice in chord. So that's how you want to approach this. And then you go uh, down one more line um, to this one. Now we have another four bar phrase. Now at the end of this far, four bar phrase, we're not going to have a one chord. Now I said at, most of the time at the end of a four bar phrase you will, but not all the time. You have to use your common sense. And why won't we use a D, uh, and what I'm talking about here actually is um, this beat right here. Or, or this segment of the music right here. So I'm looking right here because it's a four measure um, phrase. You got the first measure of that line, the second, third, and this happens on the fourth, the beginning of the fourth, and it cuts off right here. Um, that's where the end of the phrase will be. Um, you don't want to pick a G major chord. Why is that? Well, think about all the rules I told you so far. You want to make sure that the chord you pick on the bottom has the notes in the right hand in it. Well, G major chord made of the notes G, B, and D doesn't have a C in it anywhere, so that wouldn't really make sense. So instead, we're going to use a C major chord, which makes a lot more sense because it has C in it. So you always want to use your common sense um, because musical rules can change, and they do change, especially depending on what time period um, you're talking about. So that's a one chord, C major. Um, this first chord here, because we just had a five chord up top, um, I think one would, would fit the bill because you have an E here, and then you also have a C later in the measure, which fits into the chord down here. So you have a, uh, one chord, C major, and then the next You could use another C chord. You can always use the same chord twice, but that's probably not the best idea because it just would sound kind of plain. Uh, what other kind of chord can you use here? Um, keep in mind that the, the right hand notes we have here are C, B, B, C. So it would be smart to use a chord starting out here that has uh, some kind of C's in it, um, and then a B if possible. Um, that wouldn't work out so well. So like I said, I think the, the uh, four chord, the F uh, major chord, works pretty well here, because it does have a C in it. And it would make sense that the four chord would come after the one chord, so because it would usually go one, four, five, one, or one, you know, the, the, you could switch them up like we've talked about before. But we have this next one. Um, I would use an F major here. Like I said, you can play around with it um, and figure out other chords. I can maybe use a six chord there, but that wouldn't make as much sense. 
just because proceeding from the one chord, the C major chord, um, usually six doesn't come after one. It, it usually replaces one because it has two common tones. Like I said, if you don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry about it. But um, let's put an F chord here, and that'll be our four. Uh, and that makes sense because uh, the F chord at least does have that C in it uh, that's up in the melody. And one thing I want to mention is if you're using a, um, a chord every measure, you want to make sure that um, the most important, like, cause, like I said, uh, when you're looking here, like this measure right here, you're looking at all the right hand notes to see what chord would fit really well with those notes. Um, and I picked the F chord. Now, why didn't I base it off of that second note, the, the B? Why didn't I say, well, let me find a, a chord that matches the B there? Well, that works okay, too. Notice how that sounds okay. doesn't sound the best. You want to, uh, the most important, especially if you're using one chord per measure, is to look at the first note. The first note of um, that measure is the most important in, in terms of figuring out what chord to use, because that's the note you're hitting with the chord. Which I think makes sense, because because you go into the next measure, and the next measure we have a D as our first note. Well, you want to pick a left hand chord that fits that D. Um, you don't want to. You tend to want to shy away from uh, matching things with the second note of this the measure. Um, so you just want to go on whatever hits on beat one for the most part. Which hey, I think the G major chord, the five chord, works perfectly here because in this measure we have a D is our first note that's the most important one we have a, a b well hey that fits in g major too because we have the notes g b and d so you have d b and then that a is more of a passing tone to g so we have all three notes of the g major triad in there so that's what we want to use there is a g major and then i think we're ready to go on to our final line but let me play this line you always want to double check make sure it makes sense to you the chords in inversion if you've seen the music theory level three course um, you should know um, generally how that works um, but if you want to use them the chords on root position meaning they're evenly stacked you may do that it won't sound quite as good it sounds better when you use the inversions because that creates what we call proper voice leading but anyways we're finally on the last line we have the last chord in the song Filled out for us because remember the first full chord of the song and the first or remember the chord in the first full measure of the song and the last full measure of the song uh, should both be a one chord for the most part 99% um, of the time um, that will be the case um, so the beginning of this measure I think what are our options here because we have a C here remember the first note because that's where you're hitting your chord on. That's the most important note to figure out uh, if it fits in the chord or not. So we have C, and then two A's and a C. Well, you know, an A minor chord might work there. In fact, I think that makes it sound quite nice. Now, I think in the normal song, they use a C major chord here. But I think A minor works even better because in A minor, we have the notes A, C, and E. Well, hey. You know, the right hand has a C and an A. That works perfectly because both those notes fit really well into that A minor chord. So uh, let's say that is going to be what kind of chord? That's going to be a six chord. One, two, three, four, five, six. The note built on the sixth note of the scale. So that's a six chord. Um, I'm kind of out of room at the bottom to write here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write a minor right there to the side of it. So you have six chord A minor. Now we have a measure with C and G's in it. Well, I think a C major chord would be great there, right? Because both C and G fit in the C major triad. So that's a one chord, that's C major. And then um, here we have the notes A, C, G, D, C. Uh, now, the first note of that measure is an A. We can use another six chord. And that sounds okay. Um, 
but you know what? I would use, you could use either one, honestly. You use a six chord here. And then back to one. That works great, but I would use a four chord. And the four, or yeah, the four chord. The four chord works just as well because it has F, A, and C. It has both of those two, first two notes that we have in there. Especially that first note's the most important. And uh, let's let's say that. So, like I said, you have options. So long as the chord you're picking has the right hand notes in it, uh, as many of the right hand notes as you can, you should be good to go. But let's take a look. So F major. That's our four chord, by the way. And we could end the we could end the song like that, and then just go to the one chord. But hey, yeah, you know, I did say we were just going to do one chord per measure. Let's add in a five chord because we have a four chord here. A, and then a one chord at the end a perfect thing to fit in between a four chord and a one chord is a five chord so let's and it works perfectly because we have the notes g and d at the second half of the measure well hey that g and the d fit perfectly in with our five chord so which is our g major triad so let me try the end here um actually i just realized that you can't see the bottom. Well, the bottom says uh, A minor, and then C major, second measure, and then you have F major, G major. Well, hey, what we came up with, I think, sounds really nice. Um, let me play this for you now, and let me make it so I can see it the best, so I can play through it effectively. Here we go. so far. I think it sounds good. I think it sounds a lot better than it did playing them both the same, which doesn't sound very exciting at all. Um, so let me um, let me reiterate um, what we're doing here. So back to me. So to finish up the lesson, um, this was a lesson in how to figure out chords in a song that doesn't give you the chords. Now, as you notice, you uh, there isn't just one set way to do this. Now, there are certainly wrong ways to do this. But you notice at some of the points in the song, I could have chosen uh, what chords I should have picked, or I could have picked to, to kind of change. And just deciding between those chords, I just kind of played it out. You know, I played the measure before that measure. I played that measure that I was making up the chords for. And then into the next measure, and I saw how that sounded. And then I just played through using our different options see which one sounds the best and that's what I recommend you do so remember the tips for this is to first um, the first full measure and the last full measure of the song 98 percent of the time are going to be the one chord um, no matter what major key uh, most of the time unless it's some sort of weird introduction or something like that uh, especially for simple songs like America the Beautiful the first chord is going to be a one chord and the last chord is going to be a one chord and at the end of a four measure phrase, which usually has a half note, a dotted half note, or whole note, uh, most of the time it's either going to be a five chord, but it can also be a one chord. So you want to make sure that you don't just blindly put a five chord at the end of a four bar phrase, especially if the note doesn't belong into that chord, which brings me to the next. The most important point is when you're trying to um, come up with a chord for the left hand that fits the right hand, make sure that the chord has the right hand notes in it, or I guess the right hand has the chord notes in it. So for instance, if I pick an F major chord, I know you can't see me at this point, or see my hands, but I pick an F major chord, which by the way is made of the notes F, A, and C, my right hand had better have some sort of F, A, or C in it, and as many of those notes as possible. So whatever fits the best. Remember that the, if you're doing one, if you're coming up with one chord per measure, like we did, 
the first note of that measure is the most important note to uh, have your chord conform to. Now, the rules can be broken a little bit, but we won't talk about that right now. I just want to give you um, a very simple introduction in how to figure out chords in a song in which they're not written. So anyway, I, th I hope this is helpful. Um, I did make this for a student who had asked me about it. But I think it was important that um, everybody know how to do this, or at least begin to, uh, to figure it out. So if you ever have a song you have no idea, um, you can use this video to figure it out and uh, send me any questions, tim at lessonsontheweb.com, and I'd be more than happy to uh, hear them out and uh, go from there. So anyway, thanks as always for listening. Uh, have a great one, and I'll see you for the next lesson. Thank you.